Hello everybody, welcome once again to this discipleship training. In today's video, I'm going to be starting with the topic on quiet time because that's a very crucial one. But just as a reminder, let's look at what we did look at the previous video. I showed you the curriculum for this training and I mentioned to you that the curriculum for the Christian growth is broken down into three stages. We have the foundation, we have the growth, and then we have the maturity. Now, this video is the beginning of the topics and the uh, pre-foundation, which begins before the foundation itself. Under pre-foundation, we have quiet time, discipleship and disciple making, and Christ-likeness. So today, we're starting with a discussion on quiet time. Now, in this video, I'll be talking about number one, what is quiet time? Number two, why is quiet time important? Number three, how do you plan your quiet time? Then the next video, I'll be talking about how do you actually do your quiet time. So let's start off with um, a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this moment. Open understanding and teach us in Jesus' name. Amen. So quiet time, what is quiet time? I'm going to start with Jesus' example from Mark chapter 1, verse 35. And I read, it says that, now in the morning, having risen a long while before day, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. So quiet time simply means a time alone with God. Now as much as it's important for us to be part of a church community, to be part of uh, our morning devotions, the truth is that no Christian can grow without a personal daily devotion with God. So quiet time is setting out a time quiet and void of all noise where you can meet God and fellowship with Him through prayer, through the Word, and through meditation. Now why is that important? This is important for the following reasons. First of all, our world today is so noisy in a way that it's just impossible to remain focused throughout the day without having quiet time. So when you wake up from bed, automatically there's pressure to check your phone, there's pressure to check your email, there's pressure to check Facebook, WhatsApp, and so on. All these things create noise in our souls. So you find that your soul is very unstable. Now, during quiet time, we learn to keep our soul under subjection. So, the Bible says that, be still and know that I am God. Keeping your soul still is a very difficult thing that you can only get the, the, the help of the Holy Spirit in your quiet time before you start the day. So, for focus. Number two reason why quiet time is important is because of daily Christ-likeness. So I think of quiet time as a clinic where I share with the Holy Spirit some of my struggles, my character flaws, and then He helps me and grooms me to be like Christ. Now number three reason why quiet time is so important is the reason of daily guidance. Now we, we, we know that Jesus said when the Holy Spirit comes, He will guide us into all truth. Now Guidance is so crucial before you start your day. I can share an example with you. There was a day during, during my quiet time, I felt the Lord giving me instructions before I left home about a certain person I was going to meet and that this person was going to ask me for money, but the person was literally going to be lying to me. So here I was walking out of my, my room. Immediately I saw the person approaching and I knew that that was it. So I made this person, the lights unfolded one upon the one after the other, or five after the other, and I already knew in advance. So without having your quiet time, you would go into the day and be at risk because you don't know exactly what's going to happen to you. But you can be sure that you can get guidance before you start your day. Now. How do you plan your quiet time? Now, I need to mention this because that's so crucial. Now, for most of us, everything we do, we plan. If you wanted to take vacation, you would sit down, 
draw your plans, where you'll be going, how you're going to get there, when you want to arrive there, where you'll be lodging when you get there. And, and even in the issue of buying a car, you want to plan, you save, you know what car you are going in for. But when it comes to what would actually grow us spiritually, most of us leave that to chance. We just turn our Bible wherever we want and then we read. And the next day we turn another, another verse and read, hoping that we will grow. But truth, the truth is that growth doesn't happen haphazardly. It needs to be well structured to bring about growth so planning is important so now i'm going to present to you three things or three approaches that you can use for planning your quiet time number one decide on the topic three ways to decide on the topic choose something that is relevant to you that's so crucial now many years ago i lost my dad and I was in on a foreign land in Norway when I heard the news. And then during that time I was using a devotion. And I was hurting badly. So I needed something that is soothing to, to keep me going. And it was so difficult. I had my exam coming up. I was also having uh, my wedding coming up in about a month time. I, I, I just didn't know what to do. So I took my, my devotion that day and the message was about giving. And you know that giving is good, but giving isn't what I needed at that time. The next day I took the, uh, the, the book, it was talking about positive confession. That is good, but I was hurting and needed something way more than that. So I decided to plan my quiet time. So plan your topics to, to something that is relevant to you. Let's say, for instance, you're struggling with lust. Decide that you're going to take a week or two to treat on the topic of lust. Let's say you are very much quick-tempered. That is the time to work on it. Don't brush that off. You need to work on it. You need to become better. So choose a topic that is your weakness. So that's one way you can plan. Something that is an area of weakness. Or... You could also choose a topic on a virtue that you want to develop. Supposing I, I, I realize that I want to pep up my virtue of, of humility, then I want to choose that topic to work on it. Then number three, you want to also you may want to also choose any topic that is really dear to your heart because once in a while we find the Holy Spirit impressing on our heart various topics to work on. So choose that as well. So in summary, let me summarize that. Three ways of you deciding what topic to use for your quiet time. Number one, choose something that is an area of weakness. Or you can also choose something that is I did something you want to work on. You want to become more hardworking. You want to become more conscious with time management. Or number three, you want to choose something that the Holy Spirit has impressed on your heart. But don't just leave your quiet time for chance. You've got to plan it. You've got to take hold of that. I'm going to finish off with one last point. What do you do after choosing the topic? After choosing the topic, you have to now find appropriate verses that tackle that topic. Let's imagine I'm struggling with loving people. I am just find it difficult to love somebody because I'm hurt. Then I'm going to get five memory verses that are directly targeted at bitterness, hatred, or anger. So with these five verses, how do you get them? You can just Google Bible verses on anger and you see a list of them. Bible verses on bitterness and you see a number of them bible verses on 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 pain you see a number of them so go through the, that list and pick the best five now in the next video i'm going to be sharing with you exactly what you'll be doing with these five memory verses until then i want you to do me a favor go ahead make a list of the topics you want to use for your quiet time choose one of them that you want to begin with 
and then find your memory verses. Um, I hope that I'm going to prepare a list of various memory verses for various topics and at some point share with you as well. So once you're done with that, you can come back for the next video where I'll be teaching you exactly what we'll be doing with these verses. Please make sure you do this as I, uh, this exercise. Until then, stay blessed and I'll see you in the next video. God bless.